I'm Kristen, also known as Bull and Vine, here on my YouTube channel, on Instagram, on Ravelry, and pretty much everywhere else on the interwebs. And as always, I'm so happy that you're taking some time out of your day to chat about all the knitting, all the sewing, all the making, or whatever crafty rabbit hole I happen to be diving down this week. And I'm back. So uh, if you tune in with me on a regular basis, you might have noticed that I did not publish an episode last week. Uh, life got crazy, work got crazy, uh, it's the holidays, life happened, and unfortunately while I did record a full episode, I never got around to editing the thing. So <laughs> I am back this week with twice as much to catch you up on as, as I do whenever I take a break from podcasting, but uh, hopefully, hopefully you're excited uh, to see what I have to share. Um, I do have a lot of fabric and sewing projects this week. It's a very fabric heavy episode because I do have a fabric haul. If you tune into my Vlogmas episodes where I'm aiming to publish a video every day leading up to the 25th of December, sadly that is not happening either. If you've been keeping up with that, uh, you know that I met up with Gabby of Once Upon a Corgi, Tanya of the Knitting Spring podcast, and Nina of the This Old Knit podcast. Uh, we went out to Connecticut and went to Affordable Fabrics. I will talk more about that in the episode, but we had such a good time and I got quite the fabric haul, so I can't wait to show that with you. Um, and I have some knitting works in progress, uh, about three projects, so lots of fun stuff coming down the pike on this episode. But a couple of announcements before I get into that. Uh, we have our knit-alongs, our year-long knit-alongs that are coming to a close January 1st. There's the Box of Socks knit-along and the Year of the Garment knit-along. Those were 12 month long knit alongs and I do have some fun and special prizes picked out for those knit alongs so uh, I'm, I'm gonna talk about those in the last episode before the new year because I am planning to record one more episode before 2020 so uh, in that episode I will show you what what you can possibly win if you've been partaking in those uh, make-alongs and knit-alongs. Uh, so yeah, those are coming to a close. And then we also have the Practical, which is a six month long uh, make-along where you make anything, you can knit, you can weave, you can spin. So what have you, uh, anything that is going to jive with a lot of things in your wardrobe, stuff that you're gonna wanna, wanna reach for on a regular basis, like this cardigan that I, love so much and has been getting so much wear. This is uh, the Mazzy Cardigan by uh, Elizabeth Smith. <laughs> so bad with names guys. Yeah, but something that you're gonna wanna reach for all the time. Uh, so that's the gist of that Cal or Mal make along. <laughs> um, and then we also have the Cal and Mai Cal, uh, Cal. Wow, that's a mouthful. Cal and Mai is a pattern, a cowl pattern that I recently designed and released. So here it is. And I decided to celebrate the release by hosting a knit along for this. So um, whips are welcome. It's going on until February 1st. So plenty of time to hop in and join the fun. I created a thread in the Vol and Vine Ravelry group. So that is the place to be if you wanna find out all the details for all these make alongs uh, and participate and enter to win giveaway prizes. So definitely hop on over there, check it out. Um, you know again whips are welcome uh, you can use any yarn any beads you don't have to use beads it's a very relaxed um, knit along the only requirement is that you uh, knit the cal and my cal and post your finished objects to that thread in order to enter to win a giveaway prize at the end of uh, the, the knit along so and that will be a skein of my hand dyed yarn vol and vine yarns in a colorway of your choosing so Yay! Um, and thank you, thank you so much to everybody who purchased a copy of this pattern already. It makes me so happy. I've I've already seen a, a bunch of these trickling down my uh, Instagram feed, and I'm loving all the different versions that you're coming up with. The color combinations, it's it's just so so amazing. So um so yeah, there is that. And I think I think that is it for announcements this week. Uh, as I mentioned, I am gonna have one more episode that I'm gonna upload. Um, before the end of the year. Uh, next week for Christmas, I don't think I'm going to be recording a podcast because as I mentioned, I'm going to be going away on vacation, uh, but I am going to continue with Vlogmas, so definitely check that out if you are interested in that. But I will be back the week after I get back from vacation, so just a little heads up. Uh, so, all right, that said, I am going to get into what I've been making this week. Living in my 10A Casey project bag that I absolutely love, um, yeah, is my Felix Pullover by Amy Christophers. I thought I would be done with this by now, but again, 
life has been crazy. So, um, yeah, anyway, <laughs> uh, here is where I am with that. Uh, so again, it's by Amy Christopher's. I am currently on Sleeve Island, and now the yarn is stuck in the zipper. So I'm currently on Sleeve Island. I am about to bind off the first sleeve. I, I don't know, I have to try it on and measure it, but I think I'm about ready to start doing the ribbing on this. Um, and let me see, then I just have to knit the second sleeve and Bob's your uncle, it's all good. I don't think I talked about which size I cast on. I didn't cast on the smallest size, I cast on the size up from that. So there is a bit of positive e ease in here. It's very relaxed, um, it's somewhat cropped. I'll stand up so you can see where it kind of falls on me. So it, I wanna say it falls right at my waistline, which is right where I want a sweater like this to fall. Um, and it is super cozy, you guys. And this detail right here, it's so simple, but I think it's just a really clever and elegant design feature of the sweater. Um, it just adds a little personality to a very simple, straightforward, uh, basic stockinette raglan pullover. Um, and yeah, it's just super, super cozy. And I'm using, and the yarn is Sublime Willow uh, in, I think it's, it's, I think it's a worsted iron weight type of yarn, uh, but the shade is their hazel colorway and it's just an absolutely beautiful peachy mauve, tweed type of uh, chain plied yarn. And it's just a really unique yarn and I really enjoyed knitting with it. So I uh, highly recommend if you can get your hands on it. And it's, and it's quite affordable. So, you know, um, yeah. And that is where I am with my, with my Felix pullover. Uh, I really need to get this off the needle so I can enjoy it while the weather is still cold. And it is cold outside right now, my friends. It is, I wanna say like 18 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm not really sure what that is in Celsius, but it's freezing. Um, I actually had to go out and sweep some of the snow off the stoop before it turned into ice. So uh, that was that was unpleasant, um, but I had to get done. So yeah, all right, that is my Felix pullover. Sorry, I went on a completely weird random weathery tangent there. Next up on the needles is my Land of Sweets cowl by Helen Stewart. Um, the pattern is by Helen Stewart and uh, she designed this pattern with advent mini skeins in mind, which is brilliant. Um, and it's just so relaxing, so intuitive, pretty much mindless. Uh, I, not, not mindless, but um, there are a couple of lace rounds in there where, um, you know, you do have to kind of pay attention to what you're doing, but for the most part, it's just very relaxing and intuitive. And yeah, we are working our way through December. <laughs> and I am loving the way these colors are playing together. Uh, Gab I, it's like almost as if Gabby planned it. Uh, so I should probably talk about the yarn. Gabby, who has the uh, Once Upon a Corgi podcast and uh, the diary behind Once Upon a Corgi yarns, did an advent of wool and minis, which is inspired by uh, Sarah J Moss's A Court of Thorns and Roses book series, which of course, we're all obsessed over, <laughs> obsessed about. We just can't get enough, can we? I should probably mention that if you're not familiar with what Advent mini skeins are, uh, it's the same idea as a Christmas Advent calendar. You know, those uh, calendars where you open up a little window and there's usually like a toy or a chocolate inside. Uh, you open up a window every day leading up to the 25th, which is Christmas. Um, so mini, you know, Advent minis are the same idea. You don't know what the colorway is, but every day you open up a box and are surprised with a mini skein. Um, so yeah, Gabby dyed mini skeins uh, that were inspired by scenes from uh, A Court of Thorns and Roses, uh, the book series, and she is a genius. <laughs> so um, I am every time, every little box that I open up, I'm just blown away. So I am actually behind. Uh, I've knit all the way up to, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, day 14. It is now like what, the 19th? I've got some work cut out for me. Um, but since I, I'm, I have my advents here, let me open up today's. I think today's the 19th. So here's the 19th and I thought it was absolutely brilliant the way she split this all up because each book, uh, the first book is red, the second book is blue, and the third book of the series is green. So I think about three days ago we entered into the green book, which is a court of um, wings and ruin. So uh, yeah, let's let's see what's, what's in here. Um, inside a jewel box. So, oh, it's so pretty. So just to give you guys a little close up of what it looks like. Yeah, it's just, I love how each colorway just kind of, they're, while they're not completely um, 
blending into each other, there are just like little flecks of color that pick up on each other um, consecutively. And it's just, yeah, I freaking love it. So yay. So that is my Land of Sweets cowl by Helen Stewart. Highly recommend it. Um, and I could also see doing a second one in more muted tones as well. Um, but this is going to be like my, my Christmas cowl that I wear every year because I love it. So uh, when I went up to Connecticut, I always like, I, I know my sock knitting mojo is at an all time low, but uh, whenever I get together with friends, I just love having a sock on the go because I can focus on conversations and not look at my hands the whole time. Um, and I seem to knit socks a lot faster when I'm hanging out with friends. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so I, I cast on a sock, uh, and here is where I am with that. This is the first sock, and the yarn is Patton's Croy uh, Socks Effects in their Cascade colorway. And I have to say, this is one of my favorite, favorite commercial sock yarns uh, to work with. I have a pair that I knit maybe like eight, eight years ago, maybe more, and they've held up so well. Um, I've washed them, I've put them in the dryer, and they're still brand spanking new. So, um, you know, highly recommend this type of yarn. I actually picked this up uh, when we were driving back home from Thanksgiving. Uh, our, our, we have family out in uh, upstate New York, and we were driving back through New Paul's, and Dennis and I stopped in this uh, really cute art shop. Um, you know, the, New Paul's is like kind of like a tiny... Um, town. They have like a lot of antique shops, a lot of, you know, mom and pop uh, restaurants and other specialty shops, and they had an art store. So, you know, of course I popped in there, but they did have a really good uh, sock selection. So they had Patton's Croy. I picked up a skein of that. And then I was also surprised. Um, let me see. It's over here. I was also, so here is the Patton's Croy. I picked up two skeins of these uh, and they were about $8. This was $8 per skein. Um, and then I was also surprised that they had this yarn in stock. Um, and I've seen this yarn floating around uh, other podcasts and I've, I've only ever been able to find it, you know, through online shops that are based in Europe or the UK. Um, but this is Bergère de France, uh, Gumi 50. And uh, I love this colorway so much. Um, they call it beige. <laughs> But it's so much more than that. I mean, yes, there is beige in there, but there's also um, like pops of coral and brown and peach. It's just, yeah, I cannot wait to dip into this. Um, yeah, so that is uh, my sock that I'm knitting on. Um, and I'm trying to think what, I, what else there is to say about this other than it's just a plain plain sock, plain basic vanilla sock, uh, knit cuff down, uh, one by one rib, fish lips, kiss heel, and knit on my go-to um, US 1.5, 2.5 millimeter needles uh, magic loop. And I know I I said I was going to start, I was going to do a um, sock knitting tutorial. I am planning to do one. I just have to have, I just have to find the time to make one, but it is coming down the pike. So, um, thank you for your patience, but yeah, I just have to carve out a little time to actually sit down and do the tutorial because it is, it is going to be a process where I don't do it all in one sitting. Cause it would just be ridiculous for me to sit there with the camera going knitting. Anyway, I am going to do a tutorial, so please stay tuned. Uh, but it is coming. So <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, that is my sock. And that is it for the knitting content. So I am gonna move along to sewing because I do have quite a lot to share with you <laughs> um, as far as what I've been making, what I'm wearing, and fabric. There is lots of fabric to talk about. So let's get into that. All right, I guess I will start with what I'm currently wearing. <laughs> this is the Zephyr dress, a pattern by Deer and Joe Patterns. Um, and I will stand up so you can see. It is just a basic jersey skater dress. It has a v-neck, but uh, the pattern gives you an option for a scoop neck. It has princess seams. Um, and the fabric is... I want to say like a, almost like a French terry, but yeah, it's just, it has a really nice hand and drape to it. Um, but this is what the underside looks like. It has, um, it, that, this is why they call it French terry. It just has a kind of like textured back to it. Um, but I like it because it doesn't require any ironing. And <laughs> if I can skip ironing, um, it's a plus, which I think is why this gets so much wear because I just don't have to iron it. I don't have to worry about wrinkles. I can just chuck it on over leggings in the morning 
and I want to say Bob's your uncle for lack of better phrasing. <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, this is, this is probably my most worn garment during the week. Um, yeah, you can dress it up, dress it down, and I definitely want to make some more of it. I have some pont fabric, cheetah pont fabric that is in my stash. I might as well just show it to you. So this is pont fabric. It's kind of like a heavyweight, um, non-stretchy jersey, I want to say, or knit, I should say. Um, yeah, so I want—I definitely want to make another zephyr out of this. Uh, it's such a simple, easy pattern. I highly recommend it. Perfect for beginners. Um, so yeah, uh, there, there is that. I'm trying to think what else. <sighs> but yeah, that's what I'm wearing. Now, if you've been following my Vlogmas videos, you know that I uh, started sewing a jacket for Dennis uh, using this pattern right here, McCall's. Um, McCall's 78, I'm sorry, McCall's M7638. And I'm making this version right here. Um, and yeah, I did run into a little bit of a snafu uh, with this pattern because there was a typo. Uh, they didn't, they double printed two small sizes for the yoke that I needed for one of the other views and they didn't include the medium size. Anyway, long story short, I decided to make a different view uh, that did not require that pattern piece. Um, of course, a couple days later, the emailed, the customer service emailed me back with the correct pattern piece. But anyway, um, I'm glad that I went with the view that I did go with because Dennis prefers more simple clean lines if that makes any sense. So I think in the last Vlogmas episode I had cut out the pattern pieces and started stitching the the body together, the outer shell of the of the jacket, and I also cut out the hood and the lining for the hood and I ran into a little bit of trouble. Well let me show you what I have so far. So um yeah, we have a sleeve that's attached, we have the body that's put together, um, a pocket over here, let me see. This is going to be really hard to show off on the podcast, guys, because it's big and it's plaid and yeah, it just looks like a massive, massive fabric right now. So anyway, yeah, it has a flap open pocket um, and then I attach the hood. So um, and yeah, I did run into a little problem uh, attached because the Sherpa that I'm using to line the jacket is so fluffy and thick. Um, I never worked with fabric like this before, so uh, thank you so much to everybody who got in touch with me, letting me know I should probably try a walking foot um, or longer stitches. I actually did find a tutorial online how to work um, how, how to work with fluffy fabrics, and but yeah, lengthening my stitches just made such a difference, and it was a, it made it so much more manageable. So yeah, the the hood is is attached, um, and I'm so happy with the way it turned out. So it's, um, you're not gonna be able to see this very well, but it's top stitched on the outside, and I did, believe it or not, I understitched <laughs> the fabric, the, um, the Sherpa on this side, so, um, the outer fabric would kind of overlap a little bit, and, t and the, the lining would be kind of tucked under, um, on the inside and not peeking, and not, and not wanting to peek out on the outside, um, which is what understitching does. Um, so understitching basically pulls, helps pull the lining in, um, whereas if you don't do any underlining, it, uh, the lining kind of wants to kind of poke out from underneath the, the outer fabric, the fashion fabric, if that makes any sense. So um, yeah, it's a really handy technique and I wasn't sure I was gonna be able to pull it off with, with fluffy fabric, but um, it worked, it worked. And I think, you know, and it, it's very forgiving in that it hides your stitches. So even though I used a longer, I want to say I used a basting stitch, um, just something a little bit shorter than a basting stitch, maybe to under stitch the fur and it's almost camouflaged. You can't even see it. So, um, and the fact that it's a lining, it, you know, again, it's very forgiving when it comes to that. So you don't have to be too precious about your, your stitches, the, if it's straight or not. But yeah, it really worked out and I'm very happy with the way it's turning out. Um, and I did insert, uh, set in the sleeves. The one bee in my bonnet about this part was that um, you do have to ease the, the sleeve into the arm side. So I basically had to create two basting stitches to create somewhat of a gather. Um, but you, the way you set it in, it doesn't actually gather. It just kind of, I can't, I can't even describe it, but it eases, but the, but the curve of the sleeve piece kind of eases into the um, the armhole, and you, there's a way to do it where it doesn't create a gather. So um, yeah, I just had to be a little extra careful with that. Um, I don't know why they don't. I'm not. Does anybody know why you have to ease arm sleeves into a, an arm side? I'm not sure why, but anyway. Um, yeah, but I made it work. So, but right before I went to install or set in the second sleeve, uh, yet. 
another wrench yet again was thrown into my wheel of, pr of productivity. Um, so I remember while I was cutting out the fabric, I thought that I had um, accidentally cut into fabric. Like, because the fabric is so, I was working with a lot of yardage, um, I think some of the fabric was lying underneath while I was cutting out pattern pieces, and I thought that I cut through some of the fabric that I wasn't supposed to cut through. So I spread everything and I was looking, I'm like, all right, where did I make this random cut that was not supposed to happen into the fabric? Anyway, I couldn't find it and I thought I was just imagining things and I was clear until I sewed up the second sleeve and then realized, and then found, and then found the hole. So yeah, it's not a big hole and I would probably just mend it up, but the placement of it and I did try you know um, mending it together but it just looks so janky that I was like no no I can't I can't bring myself to just install this sleeve and have this this little gaping flap right here or just, like, even if I did try to mend it it would just be visible like the placement of it on it's on the front and it would just be too noticeable I would know it's there at least and it would drive me batty so unfortunately I was all out of yardage so I had to go back on fabric.com and purchase another yard of it which thankfully came today so I can I can I can power power ahead <laughs> starting today if I want to um but yeah, that was a little unfortunate. I can always recycle this and make, I don't know, something with it. But um, yeah, that was that was really annoying because I feel like with this whole project, the, the sewing gods are just kind of mocking me at this point. I don't know. First, there was a typo with the pattern. There was the random hole. I forgot what else happened. That was a total snafu. Anyway, I'm, 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 per I'm persevering. I'm going to do this. I'm going to finish it. Um, and so far, Dennis tried it on. He likes it so far. So yay. Uh, and I can't wait to have this done. Anyway, that is my coat that I'm making for Dennis. Uh, yeah, and I'm just having, I'm having fun. Um, I do like sewing for others, believe it or not. Um, and this is actually really funny because, uh, the Love to Sew podcast came out with an episode about how to say no to sewing for others. If somebody comes up to you and asks like, hey, will you sew this for me? Um, I actually like sewing for others more so than I enjoy knitting for others because yeah, knitting, knitting, is a selfish activity for me. I only like knitting for myself because it's a lot of work. It's a lot of, you know, time and effort and, you know, what have you. Whereas sewing, it's it's a speedier process. I can bang out a project in a weekend if I had the time um, to do so. But uh, yeah, so anyway, uh, I'm rambling. So let's move on to fabric, fabric haul. Yay! Okay, so as I mentioned, I panic ordered some more fabric to finish Dennis's jacket, so. So that came in the mail, yay. But then Dennis also expressed that he wanted a, a robe. He didn't ask me to sew him a robe. He just one day said, I wish I had a robe just to like throw on around the house. And I'm like, I can make you one. So um, I did find a pattern on, uh, it's by Simplicity, I think. It's a river, it, it, they have multiple sizes. I'll pop it on the screen so you know what I'm talking about. Um, so yeah, it's a reversible, robe with pockets and everything and it's just a very it looks like a very simple pattern to put together uh whip up in a weekend who knows so um you know while i was ordering him backup fabric for his coat i you know asked him to pick out some fabric for a robe um and he chose this one so i don't know how well you're gonna be able to see it yeah so it's just basic olive green and black flannel uh so there is that uh, and then I'm gonna line it with just plain solid black flannel. Um, and I got a lot of this. So the pattern actually calls for about, um, I wanna say like four, four to five yards for uh, the main fabric and then uh, the same amount for the lining. Uh, but then I got a little greedy and said that I want a robe also. Uh, so I got enough lining for a, for a robe for myself and Dennis. And then for me, I don't know, I'm still on the fence if I want this to be my robe, but you know, we'll see, we'll see. Um, but yeah, I got myself this kind of basic flannel I don't know, it's a little out of my comfort zone, but I saw it online and I really, really like the way it looks. So it's just a basic um, black and white plaid with kind of like taupey 
undertones. I almost like, it looks like peach almost. In my mind, it, it looks like peach. So anyway, this, this is going to be my robe. Uh, and it's, yeah, just basic flannel. Uh, yeah, so there's that. Um, but the other fabric haul that I have to share with you is from Affordable Fabrics. Um, as I mentioned, I went up to Affordable Fabrics with, uh, well, Tanya and I met up in the city and we took the train up to Connecticut uh, to meet up with Gabby from Once Upon a Corgi and Nina from the This Old Knit podcast. And yeah, we just, we went crazy <laughs> at Affordable Fabrics. This place is amazing, you guys. It's, um, everything there is $2.99 $2 per yard. So, you know, twist my arm. Um, yeah, I'm not going to show you everything I got because some of it was a lot of linings, a lot of uh, remnants like this. I have no idea what I'm going to make with this. I don't know. It might be a cool glitzy top. It just had to come home with me. It's, you know, it's got like this iridescent kind of mermaid material to it. But for like $1.87, for, I mean, it just, it had to come home with me. So... Um, yeah, uh, but otherwise I got a lot of lining fabrics because you can never have too much lining and, you know, lining can be just as expensive as fashion fabric, uh, you know, when you're shopping for it online. So, you know, um, I just stocked up. Uh, this was a really interesting find and I, I don't really know what it's going to become, but it was also a remnant. Uh, it's almost like a ribbed sheer knit fabric I want to say in charcoal so this might be like a really cool skirt with a lining or something I mean I think there's let me see two two and a quarter yards for six and change I mean it, it just had to come home with me so um yeah I'm not gonna tell you what I paid for everything but you know just to give you an idea you you definitely get a bang for your buck there this was a really interesting fabric um it kind of reminds me of Victorian crepe so if you're not familiar with Victorian times uh they their morning gowns were made of like this um heavy crepe material um this isn't crepe but it's like this polyester blend I want to say but it has this interesting like crepe like texture and sheen to it. I really don't know how well you're, this is going to come across, but let me see. So yeah, it's just really, really beautiful. Um, I think it'll make a really nice blouse or, um, yeah, just something Victorian-esque. I don't know. We'll see, but yeah, that had to come home with me. Um, and then I found this really cool remnant of like mauve Jersey. I mean, you can never have too much mauve. You can never have too much Jersey. So, um, it's more like a brownish mauve, I want to say, but yeah, this interesting, it, it's, it's very similar to my, <laughs> my Zephyr dress, but it's kind of like this fuzzy knit fabric, sweater fabric, I want to say. Um, I don't know what it's going to become. Maybe, maybe a Blackwood cardigan or just a wrap or Gabby suggested a wrap dress. Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I have a yard and a half to play around with. So I think maybe it, just a cardigan will do, but, um, you know, we'll see with some nice glittery buttons. Oh, <gasps> Okay, maybe. The wheels are turning. But next up, I think this is my favorite out of everything that I purchased there because I just bought the whole the whole bolt. I mean, $2.99, five yards. It's mauve velvet, or like a coppery mauve velvet, I wanna say. I don't know, birthday dress? Who knows, but it, it had to come home with me. How? beautiful as this, you guys. Um, and the really cool part is that on the reverse side, it's like this beautiful magenta. Um, and Tanya was actually cutting out some li um, fuchsia lining or magenta purple lining at the time. And I was just holding this up and I was like, I'm going to get some of that too, because this will be a really, really nice lining. How cool would like an, another Anna dress, but like a floor length version. I don't know when I would wear it, but I mean, um, I'll pop it in on the screen so you know what I'm talking about. But yeah, just a full length version of the Anna dress in this lined with this. Last but not least, while I was having all that fabric cut out, um, sitting on the cutting table was this fabric that no one was claiming. And it just, it spoke to me. I was a little on the fence about it because it's very out of my comfort zone. Um, but something about it just, I had to take it home with me. It's again, five yards of this really awesome like uh light 
teal gray brocade or I don't know what you want to call this damask or I think it's a bro brocade but it just reminds me of one of those you know like 50s style swing coats or house coats um, although I would not make one of those with them but it's just kind of reminiscent of one of those I think I would probably want like a dressing robe out of this um, with just some really fun detail like collar edging detail or something like glitter or fur or something faux fur um, yeah I really don't know what what this will become, but it just, I, I could not resist. Um, and I, I had quite the enablers that were just telling me to pull the trigger. So I did, I did, and it, and it came home with me. So um, yeah, I have a lot of fabric to work through uh, and I'm very excited and happy it's in my life. Um, and I cannot wait to play with it. It's, it's gonna be, it's gonna be so much fun working with it. Um, yeah, so it was a really, really good time. And I want to do it again. I want to do it all over again, but I have to work through all this stuff first. So <laughs> that I believe is all the the making content of the of the podcast, the episode. Um, so I am going to move along into Blather, a segment where I chat about what's happening in my life. Should you care to stick around? But first, I am just going to give you guys a quick heads up about my shop update tomorrow or whenever you're watching this. It's probably today, um, Friday, uh, December 20th. It is the last shop update of 2019. So as always, you can sign up for my newsletter to find out what will be in each update uh, by going to my website, villainfineyarns.com. Com, clicking on the newsletter link and putting all your info there and every week I send out a newsletter letting you know what will be in the shop be it bases colorways and all news surrounding bull and vine yarns so yeah thank you so much thank you so much to everybody for another amazing year though I mean gosh yeah it's it's Bull and Vine Yarns, five years. I pinch myself every day. So mwah, thank you guys. You are the best. Uh, whoever supports my small business and buys my yarn. Yeah, I'm I'm the luckiest girl in the whole wide world, <laughs> it feels like. Um, so thank you guys for another awesome year. I cannot wait to see what happens in 2020. Um, hopefully all good things. But anyway, uh, yeah. I am gonna belong into life stuff. Um, so yeah, as I as I mentioned, I barely had time to sit down, and relax, knit, make things. Um, Dennis, as I mentioned, finally passed his exam, so he's free on the weekends. I no longer can craft my heart out. I'm a little sad about that. Don't tell him. But yeah, uh, my making time has slightly been reduced um, to just blips during the day on the weekend because yeah, I want, we want to spend time with each other and do things and get things done. And, you know, with the holidays here, uh, you know, we, you know, had Thanksgiving and then this weekend we we're getting together with friends and, you know, just doing all the rounds before, um, you know, we, we take off uh, next week. So I'm trying to think what else. As far as what I've been reading, um, I am doing a reread of A Court of Thorns and Roses. <laughs> so that is kind of like, in, you know, sporadically at night before I go to bed, just reading that. Um, and then I also finished reading Throne of Glass, the first installment of the Throne of Glass series, another series by Sarah J Maas. I'm obsessed. I can't stop. I have a problem. I finished that and now I'm going to be reading The Assassin's Blade, which is a, no, like, um, a collection of short stories, which it's, it's like a prequel to the Throne of Glass series and I never read it. So it kind of like gives you a whole backstory of Selena Sardothian and her story and you know how she became an assassin anyway very very fascinating stuff i'm sure cannot wait to dive into that um but i've also uh ha i started reading uh because a lot of people recommended it to me uh called the night circus by erica morton stern i think her name is uh but yeah that came highly recommended recommended to me i listened to the audiobook for a good two and a half hours i mean maybe it's one of those books that starts off slow but I just found it to be incredibly like descriptive heavy, but story, like I felt like the story and the character development was kind of lacking. Um, yeah, I just really wasn't connecting with any of the characters and the story was just kind of falling flat for me and I really didn't care what happened at that point. So um, I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure I'm that into it to finish reading it. So I know, unpopular opinion because a lot of people really like it, but I don't know, I'm just not into this one, so wah wah, <laughs> anyway. And in other miscellaneous news, I am the proud owner of a new computer. So <laughs> Black Friday rolled around and the time had come for me to just pull the trigger and um, 
invest in a new computer because my, my poor long and suffering Mac mini that I've had for quite not, I mean, it, I bought it, I purchased it refurbished, but it's an i5 and it just unfortunately can't handle all that I need it to do between Photoshop and video editing. And I wanted to get the MacBook Pro, but if you know how much those cost, I mean, those are like an arm and a leg. I was not prepared to splurge. So I did a little research and Dell, the Dell XPS 15 came highly recommended. Like it's very comparable, if not better, uh, than the MacBook Pro, uh, and like half the price. So, you know, especially when Black Friday rolled around, I mean, I was like, all right, twist my arm. Um, and it is Windows. I grew up with PC, but then in college I switched to Macs because they had Final Cut Pro and that's what we were learning in school. Anyway, I've been like a hard, a diehard Mac fan ever since. But when, when this happened, I'm just like, all right, you know what? The Dell, the Dell is looking really good. So I caved and I got the Dell XPS 15 and you guys, I love it. It's awesome. It's, it's my new buddy. I love it. Uh, the other thing that I'm learning is Adobe Premiere Pro because, you know, since I already use Adobe Photoshop, um, you know, and Adobe Photoshop and InDesign and um, Lightroom, it, m it makes sense for me to just get the whole package and do Adobe Premiere. So, you know, I, and I have used Adobe Premiere in my previous day job. <laughs> if you're not familiar, I used to be a video editor um, and we used Final Cut Pro and then we transferred to Adobe Premiere and then I left and never used it again. So I, I've just been like reacclimating my brain to, you know, using Adobe Premiere again. And you guys, I, absolutely love it. Um, so you might notice if you are watching this, I'm still learning the ropes of Adobe Premiere, but um, you know, if you're watching this and notice something a little bit different, I may even change the intro because obviously I have my whole setup, you know, my timeline set up on Final Cut Pro and uh, it's not interchangeable between Adobe Premiere and Final Cut Pro. Anyway, um, working out some logistics with that. So, you know, apologies if the video quality is not what it, should be or used to be in previous episodes, I am working to fix that. But anyway, having fun learning that, um, you know, and it's good. I like staying up to date on technology uh, and learning new skills when it comes to that because I am, I am a total geek when it comes to that stuff. So anyway, having a lot of fun. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying whatever improvements are being made to, you know, the podcast, if anything. So I think I've been rambling on for quite some time. I'm gonna end things there. So uh, thank you so much as always for hanging out with me this week. Uh, I will be back the following, I, again, I'm gonna take a break next week from podcasting, but tune into my Vlogmas videos. I am gonna keep publishing those uh, to tide you over hopefully. Um, but I will be back the following week before the new year with another episode for you. Uh, and if you enjoyed this episode, please feel free to like and subscribe below. I, in general, when life isn't crazy and the holidays aren't happening, I generally publish a video every Friday for your viewing pleasure. So that said, happy knitting, happy making, happy sewing, whatever you fancy, and I'll see you next time. Bye! <laughs>